I had another request um, to show some of my dip pens, Victorian era dip pens, and here there's a close-up of some of these delightful things. Some are fit into mother of pearl handles. Um, little tiny, tiny nibs. A Waterman number two. Where's a Waterman number two when I want it? Here's a Waterman number two for. God damn it, there's a crack in that thing. Here's a Waterman number two. So it's thinner by far than a Waterman number two pen. There's that crack. God damn it. Anyway, they are quite lovely. If you find a Victoria, Victorian era dip pen nib that is gold, I don't know whether that one is. It doesn't seem very gold. Um, you're going to find they have really, really nice flex to them. For the most part. Some of them didn't, but many of them did, because that was the fashion back then. You wanted your handwriting to look pretty. Sometimes you have bone or ivory ends. Sometimes, you know, when a tusk got too small to make a piano key, and you lay that down to, or cut it down to be a pen holder and toothpick for your Swiss Army knife. Really, really sweet pens. Um, they don't have a feed and they don't have a breather hole. Uh, so that's an easy way to distinguish a dip pen nib from a regular fountain pen nib. They're also shaped slightly differently. They're not as rounded because they don't fit into a round hole. They fit into for the most part, a hole that is flattened at the top. This is a pen, no, first of all, it's a pen-pencil combo. Turn the back, and it's a pencil. And you can also pull this out so it fits in your hand. Or you can retract the pencil and push out the sleeve. And Why is this so tight? And you have a beautiful fountain pen. I mean, a beautiful pen nib. Um, the pen nibs that are in many of these pens are missing their iridium. Uh, and I just kept them here because I couldn't do anything with them. So these are mainly for show, believe it or not. Um, I know that's what most of you do with pens is to show them, but some of us use them, and I don't use these, and I'll show you why in one quick minute. But first I want to show you a few more of these pens. This I like because these two gold bands are not decoration. They were to fix in that little peg drilled through. That metal peg is uh, connecting the <coughs> two halves of the handle. <coughs> It had broken. There's a crack that goes right across that, and I like the fact that whoever owned this pen, wherever the rest of it is, I do not know, but they felt so strongly about repairing it that they went through the trouble. And this is not a hack job. This is not dad in the Wouldn't have been Dad. He's too busy making money. Peters? Yes, my lady? Could you put down that rake or that hoe? I don't know what that thing, the thing is that you're in your hand right now. Whatever that is. Stop working in the garden and fix my pen. Yes, my lady? And then he would go to the shed and cobble together some repair. This is fancier than that. These are actual... I imagine 14 karat gold bands that s 
slid over the top, measured and slid, and maybe cemented somehow. By a jeweler, I imagine. Lady Wentworth brought the broken pen to her jeweler. Oh, have you finished my brooch yet? No, my lady. I'm using the same voice as the gardener. Sorry about that, my repertoire is. No, my lady, I haven't done that yet. Okay, Peter, you go back to working on M. Um, some of these were supposed to do that because they were in a little carrying case. Their little, their little travel suitcase. This one fell on the floor somehow, somewhere. The floor of the the, the White Star Liner. Pretty thing. Here's some other pretty things. These are a little bit weirder. This one is for making your staff of music. Or your composing. Does it even work? Should I even try it? Should I try to try it? Come on. Well, that middle line is not... The person that bought this decided to just buy their pre their pre um, printed lines. One of the things I had in my collection once upon a time, believe it or not, well, of course you believe it. <laughs> Doing all the crap I've got at my house. I had these long pieces of metal that had little tiny, um, they were little tiny metal funnels. Uh, imagine taking a piece of metal and could we just do this better than I'm doing? Making a little funnel like this, like a batik. Uh, or a pastry funnel and these little tiny metal things were glued or cement or welded or attached riveted to this long strip and what did they do you ask you fill them with ink and you make paper with lines on them like that those and you've got these little lines again when they were before they were printed here's some weird nibs this one is a falcon nib, so it's shaped to, it was, I believe, supposed to hold more ink. All of these pens sort of only have one drop's worth of ink on the back. They don't have, there's nothing to hold them, there's no feed. So you have to keep dipping them. This one is the nicest nib I've got in terms of what it looks like because, well, as you can see, it's all beautifully engraved, and it's all one piece. It's not slipped in. It's turned into a, it's like the an early triumph nib. Uh, and it's bent at the end. Thank you very much. Whoever rented this for some movie returned it bent. Here's a cute little heart-shaped nib. Again, this might have been under some, this was not, you know, sold to the romantic. This was sold to someone to say it will hold more ink. I guess you have to dip it really far to have it do that. So anyway, you can see how much I can write with that. So that's why I use these pens if I can put them away without just set them over here. 
because I don't have room. Let's find a piece of white paper, unused, yellowed paper. The person that asked me to do this video was saying that he hated to use them because they're so thin. And they are very, very thin. Does this have iridium on the end? I don't, can't tell. You know, if, you, if, if all you used up until a few years ago when you started using uh, fountain pens, you you were taught to really hold your, or you have to, you were not even taught to do that. You're, you have to hold your ballpoint pen really tightly to be able to make it work. And uh, that got into our muscle memory, and that's what our muscles do. They, they squeeze down a lot harder than they need to to hold the hold the pen. So if you could forget that you ever tried a ballpoint pen in your life and sort of just gently put the, the, the pen into your hand. But it is funny because, you know, oops, there's, you know, your hand, there's this little hole. It, you know, if you press down, it goes almost to nothing. But when you just touch your fingers together, it's it's kind of a small open space. So you, you end up having to sort of arrange your fingers to maybe a little differently than you would normally, where you can apply pressure at these different points. There's one, I wish I had the money at the time. I was poor as I am almost all the time and the the person selling this pen um, I'd never seen before, and it was a dip pen holder. I don't even think it had a nib on it. And it had what looked like three typewriter keys, old typewriter keys glued onto the thing. They weren't typewriter keys, but they were little, little uh, circular, oval, slightly concave things pads. They, were, they look, were like pads on a flute, um, but they were smaller, like a typewriter key. And that's where you'd put your, your three fingers, where they were to go right there. And they were, you know, stuck out from the thing. So you're actually holding a fatter circumference. And it was really a cool idea, I thought. You know, here's the pen. Here's the three typewriter keys. We're sticking out wherever they were, however they were done. It, it looks sort of like a TV dish mast. So your index finger would be here, your thumb would go there, and your middle finger would go there. And the point was here. So it was really a cool idea. But um, I think sort of required you to have your, I don't know, I, 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 I tried it out and it was very uncomfortable for me because I think I moved my hand around a lot more in a pen, even a dip pen when I use one. So these really thin mother of pearl handled or sterling silver or whatever pen nibs are really quite thin. Isn't this just stunning? God, this is beautiful. I wonder if you were supposed to hold it back here. I wonder if that was part of the idea rather than way up here. My favorite artist, Saul Steinberg, would draw his great illustrations and cartoons using dip pen nibs, and he held them way back like this. My friend Russell does it too when he draws with a fountain pen. He, he 
he holds it way far back. And it's really quite, he holds it in the same way that he holds a, a paintbrush. And try it out one day on one of your pens. Not only do you see what you write or see what you're drawing, but um, it's kind of a neat experience. But most of us, you know, choke the thing way down here because this part of our hand is on the page. So we anchor our hand. Now, if your hand was not on the page, maybe just your little finger, and you moved your arm the way you're taught to, whole arm movement rather than your fingers, maybe you could hold it further back. Okay, now... A lot of my dip pen nibs are missing their nibs because I make Franken pens out of them. So I take these beautiful nibs and I will find a barrel section and feed that they fit into without breaking the nib. The feed is generally smaller than what would have been on the pen had it been real, had a real nib in it. And this, because it has a feed, it holds enough ink to do an entire envelope. This pen, uh, there's a, a video I made using this pen with red ink, and it's I, in the background I played a Victrola record of Flight of the Bumblebee, and it's, it's one dip. And you can see how how um, how long it lasted. It lasted for the entire two and a half minutes of bumblebee flight. Um, another this one. I when I first started making Franken pens, remind me to tell you about Franken pen. I'll just write it down here. Franken pen. I was trying to figure out how to make them work for me, to carry them around with me, and I, I thought by adding a breather hole that would help, and it might have. It might have helped, but it didn't seem to help enough because I really needed even more ink than what would be in that feed. I don't know why it didn't work for me, but it has worked with other people, including Neville Bedford who coined the name Frankenpen. This was decades before the interweb happened. This was computers were, you know, long before computers were used. Well, they were always used, I guess, for dropping bombs on places. But um, this is before the interweb happened, and uh, Neville came to get a pen. He said, I want one of those Franken pens that you showed me. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I was thinking, what's a Franken pen? What company is that? But then again, I thought, this is Neville Bedford. <laughs> this word doesn't exist in the real world. Thank you, Neville. Neville coined that, that word. I'm almost positive. And if you have the Oxford English Dictionary, the first time it appeared out of someone's pie hole, it was Neville Bedford's pie hole. Now you might want to ask him whether it came, that he heard it from someone, but I don't. Yeah, I think I asked him, I said, what's a Frankenbank? Those are the pens you make. He barked back. I don't think he barked. Neville Bedford is an amazing person. He's just, I don't know what cloth he's come, he comes from, but he's, he's cut from a different piece of cloth than, than most humans. And he's really, really fun. And this used to be a Franken pen. And one of the tines went amok, awry. And he wanted me to, um, so he, you know, he or someone cut the nib so both of them were even and filed them down and made this big flexible 
paintbrush of a pen. And um, I've done this too. I've, you know, when I have a perfectly good pen nib that's missing a chunk of iridium, I'll castrate it and come up with a big stub. So <clears throat> he sent me this and that and this filled with weird pens on some paper and he also sent me this letter and the goofy case love neville the silly case was the thing i thought you might if you need to run off for the weekend get away with a few pens so hold this parker pen until i'm able to come visit and enjoy the good and enjoy the goofy case it's it's funny you know this this man is an adult <laughs> he's a lawyer and he's a nut and i'm sure he would be more than happy to agree with all of these things. And he's the one that invented the term Frankenpen, that coined the term Frankenpen to describe the pens. And he put the, the nib that was in here, he, <clears throat> before it was broken, it was, uh, uh, it was a very fine, flexible, very flexible, typical nib like this one and he more flexible than that one uh, he was able to fill the pen and carry it around with them which I was amazed by I didn't realize that they could do that now I don't know how he wrote he might have written more slowly than I do my calligraphy he might have um, I don't know how he made it work for him, but I've never bothered to make it work for me. Partly because most of the work I use these pens for is calligraphy, and I'm happy to do that while sitting at my desk. Um, Neville left me a note on voicemail yesterday, and he said, I hear in your video you don't have a car. Maybe I can trade a car for that nib. Or that's sort of what he was implying. He, um, I once told him I had a Colt car that had a broken window crank, and he showed up at the pen show that I was I, in New Jersey or somewhere, and he. <laughs> He walked up to me, we were in line waiting to get in, or we were in some sort of line, and he pulled out of his pocket a, a crank, a window crank, and then he pulled out of another, he had a big raincoat, <laughs> he pulled out of another pocket another rainbow, uh, another crank, window crank. I couldn't remember whether you had a, it was a left hand passenger or a you know, and he, so he had like four or five window cranks, and I was supposed to pick the one that I thought would work. They all came from the same model car, which he evidently had many of. Um, why am I showing you this Pit 51? So I have, my job is to take this $100 bill and find which uh, dip pen nib will fit this pen, Senior Parker, and replace it and then he'll come up and try it out and give me a new car no give me a i'm happy not having a car i was never on time with any of my insurance payments and i kept on getting warrants excise tax warrants and i just i don't like spending money on cars and i live in boston where i don't need one and I live in a building where, if I do need one, I can ask people, my neighbors, can I borrow your car? Oh, sure.
because we're, we're trusting in that way. I'm trading my designated parking spot to a woman who's renting her parking spot to someone. Um, and um, I said, well, where do you park your car? Well, I park it on the street. And I said, well, I tell you what, you'd use my parking spot. And I'll for that luxury. Maybe I can use your car once in a while. And I've used it three times, I think. So that's pretty good. It's much easier than... Look at this thing. Look at this nib. God bless. This is a dip pen nib. Victorian era dip pen nib. Probably a number three or four size. Does it have a number on it? Number four. Leroy and Fairchild. It is just amazing. You just have to think. Get fat. <laughs> and it does. It sort of reminds me of when people say, I want a very dry martini. You wave the vermouth cork over the gin. That's sort of what this nib is like. It's sort of, you, you just have to think vermouth and suddenly you have vermouth. But here you have the, a gallon of vermouth in your that's the difference, I guess. You're not seeing the Exxon Valdez worth of spillage. Come on, can I get this to reflect the light? Okay, angle of incidence, angle of refraction. Try to remember what you've learned in high school. Tell you what, there, move the camera. It's just, I could just sit here all day long and make these little tiny marks, never spelling a single thing, never drawing. Okay. Can I find a spot that's in the camera? So these nibs are amazing. If you do find you're out and about and you see a Victorian era dip pen nib that has its iridium, on it. Take a chance and buy it. And it, you don't have to buy the fancy, you know, this, this one here. Where is it? I don't know. It's too hard for me to get it to. But the whole holder is solid gold and you don't need to buy the solid gold holder. And this is the nib that, that Neville wants. Except he probably wants it to be even more flexible than that. But I don't know if I have one to sell him, even for the a price of a car. It's really tough for me to say goodbye to some of these. This one I think is missing its iridium. Yep. This is just delightful. Just smooth sterling. Had a name on it that someone thought was Helen. Helen Newberry. 18, 18, 1909, 1909? God, this is so... <laughs> this engraving is amazing. It's really fun. Here's how they make the E. This is 
these are things that I am learning right here when I'm talking to you. Let me get my... Where's the pen I was just using? Here's how they made the E. Dash, 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 dash. They were... This, the engraver was studying Morse code. I think it has 6, 18, 20, 22 lines. Let me just look under my microscope again. Oh my god. <laughs> it is like... It has way more lines. Dash, 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 dash. It's like this, but they're little dashes. Okay? Very subtle. And then what's really, really fun This is just hysterical. This is, make, this is making me... Then they went wacky with the serifs. <laughs> they made these very fat, triangular, cuneiform-like spikes sticking, <laughs> sticking out. I wonder, and it's just cracking me up. I'm being, I'm cracking up. That, that's why I thought, I thought someone had tried to obliterate the name because I was looking under the 1909. Nineteen nineteen? No, 1909. And I thought, well, someone's trying to cross this out. Look, I can just show you. And it isn't being crossed out, it's being... It's supposed to look like that. Can I zoom in to this thing? I'm zoomed in all the way. There we go. Isn't this funny? Helen? It's really cool. I've never ever seen anything like this. Look at that E. But that, the 1909 part, the 9 has these little cuneiform triangular bits on every corner, on every corner. So it's just, it's prickly. It's like a, it's like You know, here's the, the nine, and it has boink, 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 boink. It's like a torture device. Anyway, really, really sweet. I like making these videos because I learn things. I... I might have thoughts. I don't know, do I think with words or do I just do ideas bubble up in your head without actually turning them into words? But by picking a word to describe what I'm looking at to tell you what I'm thinking helps me focus and helps me, um, gets my brain, I guess, ready to see things I didn't see before. I don't know how that works. So, it's really cool. This is one of the reasons I like pens that have engravings on them and names on them, because they can be so cool. The design of them can be so cool. Okay, I'm going to tell you the, the story of two, <laughs> two
two stock brokers. These are called stock broker pencils because they have a big fat lead that goes in them. I think this is a Hicks Pen Company pencil. In the sterling silver and the guy that did whatever he needed to use this big fat pencil for um, went to the store and Hicks was a jeweler I mean it was a they made fancy pens fancy things and he wanted the plain one because he it's just it's just business for him. He's just raking in the money for other people. And I don't need anything fancy. Get me something that looks as close to this. And he pulls a hammer out of his pocket. And he said, I want a tool. The guy down the street from here that's building that skyscraper had this in his pocket. And this is what I want my broker's pencil to look like. What can you show me? And he shows you this. Meanwhile, the next customer is waiting in line, not really paying attention. He's, But he shows up at the counter and he says, I, my good man, want a stockbroker's pencil. And I want it this instant. And I want it now. And I want it to look fancy. And he comes up with this. Gold CH and L Company, whatever that company was. And I want it tasty because I bite on the end of it. Didn't he like this end of it? So he writes down the same numbers. He probably crosses his seven and he makes his twos like that or Get me 20 shares. He wasn't a very good stockbroker because he spent too long admiring. He'd be looking at the little sparkly bits of his pen. Meanwhile, stocks are being sold, dumped. People are jumping out of buildings, splattering on the floor, on the ground outside, on the sidewalk, and he's just mesmerized by the sparkly bits. Meanwhile, this guy, right on top of things, he knows exactly what's going on and he will make it happen. Tale of two stockbrokers. Okay, which drawer do they go in? Oh, well, we're on it, just to end the saga of the dip pen. Here's a dip pen holder. Just beautiful smooth sterling and fluted. One has these little bumps right here. And it has these little these little things there. What could that be? And it has this big bump here. You got it. It's the Graf Zeppelin. Uh, it says Graf Zeppelin there. So this is a souvenir you would buy from the Zeppelin company or sold at Lakers, New Jersey and other places by vendors of Zeppelin-ness. But this, this is interesting. These have the windows, the fenestration. These have the fenestration you saw on the Hindenburg. The passengers and the crew and the bridge were all on, on, the, on the Graf Zeppelin. They were all right there. On the Hindenburg, this thing was much, well, I don't know if it was smaller. I think it was a little smaller. And that was just where the the bridge was. And maybe some the Marconi room and blah, blah, blah. Maybe the officers' quarters were there too. But up here in this area, it had the windows and the crew and the cap passenger cabins. 
So I think, I wonder if this said Hindenburg and they crossed it out. They took off some of the fins to make it more streamlined in the hand, but it's really sweet. What are your thoughts? Do I have anything else to show you? No. Oh, I do. Look at this nib. This is a dip pen nib that has a Y-shaped Y fronts to match your underwear. And it has a breather hole, which I did not put in. But you can see the Again, this was to, it's also a stub nib, an original stub nib. And I think I'm just not dipping these enough. Well, now I dipped it too much. See, I can write that much and then it runs out. This poor nib, I think, got flattened along with the rest of it. It must have been stepped on or something. This is broken. Oh well. So, back to the story. The person that asked me to make this video, it's all your fault, 41 minutes, was talking about the thinness of these pens. And you really do have to imagine yourself a Grand Dame Deluxe. I don't know what you have to do to make you just have to very lightly put it in your fingers and not press down. Just have uh, apply enough pressure to hold the pen in place. Look at me, I'm a chocolate mess. Bye.